Werner Enterprises utilizes the Qualcomm logging system, known as QHOS. This module will explain in detail how to use this system. To begin, let's discuss how to log in and log out of the MCP200. This process will vary slightly depending on if you're a solo, team, trainer team, or slip seat driver. If you're a solo driver, tap the Login button from the MCP200 home screen. This screen appears, displaying the login fields you need to fill out to complete the login process. Your driver ID is the letter D, followed by your employee number. In this example, we'll use driver ID D12345. Your password is the last six digits of your social security number. In this example, we'll use password 456789. After your password is entered, make sure the active status field is marked. Then tap OK at the bottom of the screen. You're now logged in. To get back to the MCP200 home screen, tap the house icon at the top of the screen. To log out of the MCP200, tap the login button from the MCP200 home screen. This screen appears. Your name is automatically selected since you're the only driver logged in. Tap the Log Out button at the bottom of the screen. When the pop-up box appears, confirm you want to log out by tapping OK. You're now logged out and will be taken back to the MCP200 home screen. When you log out of the MCP200, you are automatically placed on Line 1, Off-Duty. Slip seat drivers use the same process as a solo driver to log in and log out. However, remember to log in at the start of every shift and log out at the end of every shift. If you're a team driver or a trainer team, tap the login button from the MCP200 home screen. The first driver logs in the same way as a solo driver does. The status for the first driver will default on active. Once you click OK, you're logged in to the MCP200. After the first driver has logged in, this screen appears. Tap the Add button at the bottom of the screen to log the second driver in. The second driver enters their login information now. The status for the second driver will default on Inactive. Tap the OK button. And the second driver is now logged in. If you're a trainer team, log in the second driver each time you pick up a new student. Both team drivers and trainer team drivers must change their status from inactive to active every time the driver behind the wheel changes. To change your status from inactive to active, tap the Login button from the MCP200 home screen. Once this screen appears, tap the name of the driver you want to change the status for and then tap the Change button. When the pop-up box appears, type in your password, which is the same password you use to log in, and then tap OK to complete the status change process. Your password is required only when changing from inactive to active status. When the inactive driver changes to active status, the other driver becomes inactive automatically. To log out of the MCP200, tap on the Login button from the home screen. Once this screen appears, select the name of the driver that needs to be logged out. Tap the Log Out button. When the pop-up box appears, confirm you want to log that driver out by tapping OK. That driver is now logged out. Repeat this process if you want to log the second driver out. Now that you know how to log in and log out of the MCP200, let's discuss how to view and change your duty status. To view your current duty status, select the Hours of Service button from the MCP200 home screen. Then tap the Status tab. From this screen, you can view information related to your current duty status. The green circle indicates the active driver. The date indicates the current DOT day. The prior calendar day displays if, for example, the driver's start time is 1800 hours and the current time is 0300 hours. The DOT clock displays the lesser of the times remaining on any clock before being in violation. The status field indicates your current duty status. The start field displays the date and time that the current duty status began. The now field 
shows the current date and time. The duration field indicates the length of time on the current duty status. And the exception field indicates if an exception is being used. The last 34-hour reset field shows the date and time of your last 34-hour reset. If you haven't had a 34-hour reset in the last 8 days, you'll see the message, No Reset in Current Cycle. The next 34-hour start field indicates when you can take your next 34-hour reset. The Hours to be gained field shows the on-duty hours you may get back on your 70-hour clock at 0 hundred hours tonight. The Hours gained in 2 days field shows the on-duty hours you may get back on your 70-hour clock at 0 hundred hours tomorrow night. And finally, the Mileage Today field shows the total mileage driven in the current day for the active driver. Your clocks are automatically reset if you take 34 hours off, including two periods between 0100 and 0500 hours Central Standard Time. If you have a 34-hour reset and you know you'll be off again for 34 hours, including two periods between 0100 and 0500 hours Central Standard Time, you'll reject the current reset in order to take the later one, since only one 34-hour reset is allowed per week or 168 hours. This is done by tapping the Reject button. When you reject a current 34-hour reset, it's immediately removed from your log. You must determine whether to reject the 34-hour reset before you approve your logs. Once approved, the Reject button will disappear. We'll discuss approving your logs later in this module. Now that you understand how to view your current duty status, let's take a look at how to change from one duty status to another. To change your duty status, tap on the Status tab. Then tap the Change button at the bottom of the screen. From this screen, you can change your duty status and include a note or remark explaining the reason for the change. The Status field indicates your current duty status. The Duration field shows the length of time you spent on the current duty status. The Change To field lists each duty status that you can change to. Finally, the Remarks field allows you to select a remark or note to describe the reason for the duty status change. Off equals Off Duty or Line 1. SB equals Sleeper Birth or Line 2. DRV equals Driving or Line 3. On equals On Duty, Not Driving or Line 4. Off DRV equals Off Duty, Driving, Personal Drive Time or Line 5. Personal drive time is now being referred to as personal conveyance. To change your duty status, select the appropriate status from the Change To field. In this example, we're changing from the current status of on duty to off or off duty. Next, select a remark or note from the drop down menu in the Remarks field. And finally, tap the OK button at the bottom of the screen. At this point, You've successfully changed your duty status. With the QHOS system, you have to remember to change your duty status to Line 4 when you start your pre-trip inspection or fuel. You'll be in log violation and subject to disciplinary action if there's no time logged at the start of your day for your pre-trip inspection and each time you swipe your fuel card. As always, log it as you do it. When you perform job-related tasks such as the pre-trip, fueling, loading, unloading, splitting, swapping, and dropping or hooking to a trailer, make sure to manually change your duty status to Line 4. The QHOS system will not automatically change your status as you send in related macros. Warner audits the system to verify the Line 4 time associated with each of these job duties. If no Line 4 time is recorded with the macros you send, you'll be in log violation and subject to the log violation progressive disciplinary policy. Note that if you don't change your duty status to DRV or Line 3 before you start driving, the system automatically moves you to DRV status and locks you out of the hours of service application. If you forget to change your duty status after you stop driving, the system defaults you to On Duty or Line 4. If you need to change to Off Duty, Driving or Personal Drive Time, you must first get approval over the Qualcomm through a Macro 52. Once approval is granted, you'll be able to select the Off Duty,
driving field and change your duty status to personal drive time. While the tractor is in motion, this countdown clock displays how long you have until you're in violation of whichever clock runs out the soonest. You'll receive three separate audio warnings at 60, 30, and 15 minutes before going into a log violation. An alert will appear if you go into a log violation. Another important function of the QHOS system is the option to view a summary of your logs. Let's take a look at how this works. There are several different ways to view a summary of your logs. You can use the Summary tab, Clocks tab, Graph tab, Day Log tab, or 8 Days tab. The Summary tab displays the time remaining on your 8-hour rest break, 11, 14, and 70-hour clocks. The first is the 8-hour rest break clock, which shows your available on-duty time until you must take a 30-minute consecutive break. When you're off-duty, whether on SB, off, or off-DRV status, for less than 30 minutes, and you change to on-duty, either on or DRV, with less than 2 hours remaining on the 8-hour rest break clock, a warning appears with the time required to complete the rest break. You are not notified when the 30-minute rest break is complete. However, you can look at the 8-hour rest break clock to see when it's reset. The second is the 11-hour clock, which shows your available drive time for the day. However, your actual drive time may be less if one of the other clocks has less time remaining. Third is the 14-hour clock, which shows your available on-duty time for the current day. The last is the 70-hour clock, which shows your available on-duty time for the current 8-day cycle. Your actual available on-duty time is the lesser of the times remaining on the 14-hour and 70-hour clocks. The Clock tab allows you to check your remaining hours under the U.S., Canada Main, and Canada North rule sets. The green check mark indicates the rule set you're currently using. To change the rule set, tap the Region button at the bottom of the screen. Under the Region field, Select either the U.S., Canada Main, or Canada North rule set. Choose the format in which you want the date displayed. Finally, pick whether you want the distance displayed in miles or kilometers. Once you've selected your desired preferences, tap the OK button at the bottom of the screen. Warner will always audit under the U.S. Hours of Service rule set. Therefore, you'll continue to receive log violations if you're in violation of the U.S. Hours of Service rules. You're also able to view a summary of your logs in graphic form by tapping the Graph tab. An orange border around the blue bar indicates the current duty status. A red border signifies that the duty status occurred during a system or sensor failure. If this happens, you'll receive a notification that there was an error. You should keep paper logs and contact the logs department and your fleet manager until notified that the problem has been resolved. A dark blue border indicates a daylight savings time overlap. The graph tab also shows your current status, duration of that status, and when you started that status. You can view a summary of your logs for previous days by tapping on the arrows above the graph. To review the details for each status, tap the horizontal bar. The day log tab shows all your duty status changes over the past 24 hours. All the times shown here are in Central Standard Time. You can use the arrow keys at the top to scroll through previous day's records. You may also use the arrows on the side to scroll down through all the duty status changes for that day. The most recent status change is at the top of the screen. However, it doesn't show the current duty status that you're on. A green check mark appears before each approved record. A red exclamation point precedes each record collected when there was a system or sensor failure. The location field displays the GPS location of the vehicle when the activity began. You can view the remarks or notes of a duty status by selecting the duty status and then tapping the remarks button at the bottom of the screen. The 8 days tab provides an 8 day recap of your logs. The date field indicates a specific date within the current 8 day cycle. The mileage field shows you the miles driven during that specified date for the active driver. The driving field tells you the total time spent driving, or line 3 time, for the specified date. And the on-duty field 
provides the total on-duty time, or Line 3 and Line 4 time for the specified date. From the 8-Day tab, you can manually request a log update for approval by tapping the Log Request button at the bottom of the screen. There may be times when you're stopped by DOT and the officer wants to review your logs. There are two different ways to do this. One, you can hand the officer the DOT Quick Reference Card, which provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to review your logs directly from the unit. Or, if the officer wants a hard copy, you can get this from the 8 Days tab. Tap the Fax button at the bottom of the screen. The Fax Request screen appears, which allows you to enter the fax information for the DOT officer. Type the officer's fax number in. Then type the officer's name in the Attention field. Select the region of the DOT office from the drop-down menu in the Region field. Finally, tap the Request button to fax your logs. There's also a QHOS website for drivers that allows you to view, save, and or print your hours of service log records. To view your current logs or print out your quarterly log records, go to https colon slash slash dhos dot mycqualcom dot com slash dhm slash. Once you're on the website, type Warner Enterprises in the company name field. In the Driver ID field, enter the same driver ID that you use on your MCP200, which is the letter D, followed by your employee number. In the Password field, enter the same password you use on your MCP200, which is the last six digits of your Social Security number. In the Last Name field, enter your last name. Finally, click the Login button. From the Home tab, you can view your current duty status which includes the start time of the status, the last update, and the duration of the current status. You can also view a summary of your 8, 11, 14, and 70 hour clocks. The Report tab allows you to save and or print your log records. As of third quarter of 2013, you need to save or print your quarterly log records from the Reports tab on the Hours of Service website. Werner no longer mails them out. To save or print your log records, select a date range in the date range field. Next, select the log format you want to view your records in by choosing USA or Canada from the drop-down menu. Finally, click Run Report to generate your log records. Your log records are created as an Adobe file. Once this file appears, you can click Print or Save. One of the biggest advantages of the QHOS system is the ability for drivers to approve and edit their own logs, essentially putting more control back into their hands. Let's take a look at how to do this. As a professional driver, it is your responsibility to manage your logbook, so you must review your past duty status records and either approve each record or make the necessary edits. The Approve tab shows all the duty status changes that have not yet been approved, the most current duty status does not appear in this list. Use the scroll down arrows on the side of the screen to review each log record that has not been approved. If all of your log records are accurate, tap the Approve All button at the bottom of the screen. Once the pop-up box appears, tap OK to finish approving all your log records. Before approving your log records, tap the Day Log tab to check the accuracy of each log record you should also approve your logs daily. Once you approve a log record, you won't be able to make an edit to that record from the MCP200. When this happens, you have to contact the log department to make any necessary edits. When reviewing your logs for accuracy, you may find a duty status that's incorrect. If that duty status has not been approved, you can edit it. Note, only non-driving records can be edited. One scenario where you may need to edit your logs is when you need to change one duty status to another. In this example, the driver shows to have been on duty for two hours. However, he or she was actually off duty during those two hours. To edit the duty status, tap the record you want to edit. Then, tap the Edit button at the bottom of the screen. The Original field tells you the original duty status, the start time and date of that status, and the duration of the duty status. To change the duty status from on to off, select the drop-down menu and tap off. Choose a note describing the new duty status from the Remarks drop-down menu. Then tap OK at the bottom of the screen. 
a secondary screen then appears, the Edit Reason screen. Enter a note describing the reason for the change. Then tap OK at the bottom of the screen to complete the edit process. Another scenario where you may need to edit your logs is when you need to split one duty status into two. In this example, the driver is showing off duty for two hours. However, he or she was actually off duty for the first hour, but was on duty for the second hour. Again, select the record you want to edit and tap the Edit button. To split the log, tap the Scissors button in the upper right corner. In this example, the original duty status was off from 1200 to 1400 hours. Because the driver was only off duty for the first hour, select Off from the first drop-down menu. Now enter the end time of the first duty status into the Until field, in this case 1300 hours. Because the driver was on duty during the second hour, select On in the second drop-down menu. You won't be able to select a time in the Until field because the record ended at 1400 hours and you're only able to split the log record into two separate duty statuses. Select a note or a remark from the drop-down menu describing the new duty status and tap OK at the bottom of the screen. Once the Edit Reason screen appears, enter a note describing the reason for the change and tap the OK button to complete the edit. The next scenario where you may need to edit your logs is when you need to insert a duty status in the middle of an original duty status. In this example, the driver is off duty for a duration of 4 hours between 1200 and 1600 hours. However, the driver went on duty from 1300 to 1330 hours, then went back off duty from 1330 to 1600 hours. Again, select the duty status you want to change and tap Edit. Then tap the Scissors button. Since the driver was off duty from 1200 to 1300 hours, select Off from the first drop down menu. Then enter 1300 into the Until field. The driver went on duty at 1300 hours, so select On from the second drop down menu. Same as before, you cannot enter an end time into the Until field. The field automatically says 1600 hours but the driver was only on duty from 1300 to 1330 hours. Because you're only allowed to enter two duty statuses, you have to complete this record as is and then create another log edit. To finish the current edit, select a note from the drop-down menu and then click OK. When the Edit Reason screen appears, enter a note describing the reason for the change and then tap OK. You now need to make a second edit to the log so find and select the on-duty record you created from 1300 to 1600 hours. Tap the Edit button, and then the Scissors button. Going back to the example, the driver was on duty from 1300 to 1330 hours, then went off duty from 1330 to 1600 hours. Select On from the first drop-down menu, then enter 1330 in the Until field. Now select Off in the second drop-down menu, the end time of 1600 hours automatically appears. Select a note from the drop-down menu and click OK. When the Edit Reason screen appears, enter a note and then tap OK to complete the edit. The final scenario where you may need to edit your logs is if you're a team driver and forgot to change to the active driver. If Driver 1 accidentally logged a non-driving record under Driver 2's logs, both drivers would have to make a log edit. In this example, Driver 1 fueled from 1200 to 1215, but accidentally logged it under Driver 2's logs. Driver 2 would select the log record from 1200 to 1215 and complete an edit from on duty to off duty. Driver 1 would then make an edit to their logs from off-duty to on-duty from 1200 to 1215 for fueling. There will be times when you won't be able to make a log edit from the MCP-200. In these cases, send a Macro 50 to have the log department make the edit for you. One example is once you've approved your log records. You'll also have to send a Macro 50 for any driving record that you want to edit. For example, if you're a team and you forget to change the active driver and log a driving record under the incorrect driver, send a Macro 50 to have the log department put the drive time under the correct driver's log. 
Another example of when you'll need to send a Macro 50 is if you forget to log off the MCP200 when you take your truck to the shop and the shop performs a test drive of the vehicle. The final function of the QHOS system is the load tab. The load tab attaches the trip number or numbers to your daily log records. Under this tab, you can create a new load, view your load history, or edit load information. Let's discuss how to create a new load. To do this, tap on the Load tab and select the New Load button at the bottom of the screen. From this screen, you can enter information about the new load you just received. The Load ID field is where you enter the trip number of your new load. Enter the date you received the load information in the Start field. Enter the date you will finish the load in the End field. Enter the Bill of Lading number in the BL Number field. Then enter the trailer number of the load in the Trailer 1 field. You can list up to three trailer numbers in the load screen. Scroll down to enter more trailer numbers by using the down arrow on the side. Once you're finished entering all of the information, tap the OK button to complete the new load. You can also view a history of your previous loads from the Load tab. Tap the History button to look through previous loads. Review your history by scrolling up or down using the arrows on the side. View the details of a specific load by selecting the load and tapping the Details button at the bottom of the screen. If you entered information on a load that ends up cancelling or that you don't end up taking, you can delete the trip by selecting the load and tapping the Delete button at the bottom of the screen. A secondary screen appears. Confirm you want to delete the trip by clicking OK. You can also edit your current load from the Load tab. The current load you're under appears once you select the Load tab. Tap the Edit button. The Edit Load screen appears. You can make changes to any field by simply selecting the field you want to update. Once you've finished the changes, tap the OK button to complete the editing process. Finally, you can edit previous loads by selecting the History button from the Load tab. Select the load that you want to edit. Tap the Edit button and proceed as described just a minute ago to edit the load. This completes your training on the QHOS logging system. If you have any questions over any of the functions we covered today, please contact your fleet manager or the log department.